Yo everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a video on something I've never done a video on before and that's my nails. I realised before that even though I've mentioned I've not worn nail polish in like a good couple of months, um, I actually wanted the first time when I did wear nail polish again to be on camera on YouTube to maybe help some of you guys out there that are in a similar position to me. Now just a little bit of background about me and my nails. Now this is not by any means a video of how to grow your nails, how to make your nails strong, how to keep your nails healthy or anything to do with that. This is literally about how I do a at-home manicure basically. Now the reason why I'm not going to mention any of those things is because I would be unfair in giving people advice that I don't take any of myself. I have been very blessed and I'm very lucky to have very good genetics in which my nails grow long, they grow strong and they very rarely break. The only time they break is if they hit something very hard and then they will chip or snap. So these nails that you can see are mega mega strong and for those of you that may remember I did mention that um, just for the hell of it I decided to get acrylics for my birthday in September and what they did was obviously they buffed down your natural nail quite a lot before they put the acrylic on top. I didn't like it, I found them too long. I also found that they made my nails ache which is maybe because it's the first time I ever done it and I just generally didn't like the feel of them especially because I'm so used to having my own nails as in on their own and I had them removed within a week which is not right it was bad for my nails to do that because then they went and buffed over it a second time which basically damaged my entire nail bed and that meant that any time that they grew even a tiny little bit they would peel off it was almost like baby's nails which you just peel off rather than cut and the only thing that I could do was literally grow my entire nail off and so that they could grow back fresh. That was in September and we are now in March coming into April. Now to be fair it didn't take all that time for them to grow back. I have just continued to cut them down very very short until I felt that I was happy again with growing them back and then having them have nail polish on. I will admit that not having to put nail polish on every week was like great because you know having to do the makeup, the hair, the this, the that, having not to do the nails was amazing. Anyway so as you can see these nails are very very long. Not only that they are completely untouched, they have not been buffed, they have not been filed, they have had nothing on them other than hand moisturiser and that is it. So this is literally the way that my nails grow. My nails grow the same way that women go into salons to ask for acrylics for them to look like like this. They grow in a squoval shape which is the ideal and most common size uh, or style of nails that people have and I'm going to be doing it literally from scratch. So this will probably be the only time you ever see me do something like this because it's not often that my nails are so perfectly natural. Normally they've got a bit of staining on them from nail polish and that sort of thing but they are literally absolutely virginally perfect. So I am going to shift round and uh, do this on my bed because I actually haven't got any space on my dresser or anything to do this so do bear with me if you've got any comments or questions or anything like that feel free to ask me below other than that I hope you guys enjoy this video like comment subscribe and enjoy okay so all you need in order to give yourself a at-home manicure are just a couple of things this is just a cheapo random nail file you get like a set of 10 from Superdrug and then I've got this uh, four-way brick which is from Models Own. It's a file, buff, smooth and shine. I don't tend to use the file because I have this. I mostly use the buff and smooth and then I've got this cuticle oil which actually came as part of this uh, soap and co nail kit but any cuticle oil will do. And then some hand cream, which I love using the Lush Love and Light. And then for the nails, I've decided to go for the Essie Brides No Grooms nail polish. I love Essie ones. I find that they last a really long time. They don't chip and they last a lot longer than other brands. And then the Sally Hansen Double Duty Base and Top Coat. I use this as a base. And then the Classic Sachet Beat Top Coat, which is a fast drying top coat. It's up to you whether you want to use it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It depends. And then just a normal bowl so that you have something to soak your nails in. And then this is just a flannel to dry off my hands afterwards. The first thing that I'm going to do is file my nails. These are so long. They are completely unfiled. 
and they are in their most natural state. So what I tend to do is I use the rough side first. Now bear in mind, if you've got very soft nails, use this side, which is less gritty. But if you've got super hard, strong nails like mine, this one won't be as damaging. If you've got soft nails and you use this, you may break your nails. So what I generally tend to do, because my nails already grow in a squoval shape, it's more about just shaping them and defining them a little bit more and making them look a little bit neater. All I literally tend to do, so let's go with this nail first, is I just go backwards and forwards. Now I know that they say, whoever they is, you should only do it in one direction. Now that is a matter of choice, I prefer not to. So I'm already starting to kind of, the edges are very sharp because as I said that they are just growing in their natural state. So all I'm going to do is make them a little less sharp because I'm already quite happy with the shape of them. This one here is kind of sloping so <laughs> and even this one was growing wider than the actual nail weird it's like I've got nails on steroids but this one now I'm just gonna try to keep it at the same length because it seems to be kind of vertical tend to pull the skin down like this like I'm doing with my other finger so that it doesn't get in the way of me filing my nail also helps to balance it as well so you're not going flying all over the place like you can see I am now and then so that's it really I know that that didn't seem like that long but then to be fair I was just trying to neaten my nails more than anything else Okay, so I filed the other hand off camera. I'm just going to stick to one hand for the video, otherwise we'll be here forever. So now your nails should have like these bits hanging off the edges, which is almost like entrails. Um, and it's quite rough on the edges too. Now before we deal with that, I'm going to move on to using this block. And I'm not going to use the file, I'm going to use the buff. And what you do is you buff your nails down. Now this helps with circulation as well as if your nails are like mine, some have got more ridges to them than others and you buff them out so that your nails are left nice and smooth so that when you put on the nail polish, you can't see any ridges and it's a nice smooth application. Now by all means, you can do as much as you want, but I would advise do not overdo it. You can damage your nails. So I'm just going to show you how I do it. I don't do it too much just a little bit and as you're doing it you can even feel your nail heating up so that is something that you have to be aware of that you don't want your nails to heat up so much that you end up basically damaging them so your nails should have all this white stuff on the top which is just dust nail dust that's what I call it nail dust so I'm literally just doing it a couple of seconds over each this one, maybe a little bit more because it seems to have more ridges on it. And I'm quite messy about it too because it's not a big deal. Alright, once you've done that, your nails should look all white and weird and dusty looking. Like you haven't washed your hands, like you've walked through a spider's web, whatever it is. And now you can use the smoothest side if you want to. Sometimes I do. All it does is smooth out a little bit more. I don't really see how much more of a difference it makes. But I just do it because it's there, to be honest. So I'm actually quite quick about it, as you can see. Right, now to deal with all these sharp and kind of jagged bits that are left behind, now I tend to use this side, which is less abrasive, on the nail file. So what I'll do is, I will almost smooth out a lot of it. 
And then I'm going to show you something really gross that you lot might not do yourselves or be aware of. What I do is I take that end and then I scrape it off. And then I file it downwards on the edge so that it removes the residue nail because that's what it actually is. And then it leaves a lovely and smooth and soft finish. And there's no residue, if that's what you want to call it. This one, let, let me show you. So I'm just going to file it a little bit just to smooth anything out that was under there. But you can see underneath, if you can zoom in, I've zoomed in as far as I can. So you just take that end of your nail file and literally, can you see that bit there hanging off? Just scrape it all off. And then file it downwards just very gently I'm not going in too hard we're not trying to reduce the size of the nail or do any actual shaping and then it should be left completely smooth underneath so just do that to all the rest of your nails <laughs> all these little bits and pieces this is the reason why I've taken a gold cloth so that you wouldn't see the bits of nails ew, which have blended into this now I'm just gonna do the other hand off camera so I just went and rinsed my hands a little bit so they're nice and clean and I have filled up this bowl with some warm water now it's up to you what you whether you want to put anything in it or not some people put bubble bath in it some people put a little bit of soap in it they put various different things but I'm not gonna do anything but one thing I do to do is slightly differently is I take the cuticle oil. This one comes as a roller ball and I literally rub it all over my cuticles and my nails. I'm quite generous with it. Some people tend to do this afterwards, but I tend to do it now because it's just what I have found that works best for me. Now I'm just going to rub it in slightly because this still moisturizes your hands too so that's something to remember it's not just about the nails your nails no one cares if they look good if you've got dry crusty looking hands as well so once I've done that then I soak my hands in here and the oil will stay on because oil and water obviously separate they don't mix well with each other and the oil will still be on my nails when I take it off and it helps to kind of sink into the nails a lot quicker if I do it with some warm water. So I generally tend to leave my nails to soak for five to 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna leave this like this and then I will come back. Okay, so I've just taken them out and just what I tend to do is just use the flannel to just slightly damp them down so that there is still a tiny bit of oil on there, but not too much. Now I know that a lot of people tend to use cuticle pushers to push their cuticles back. I don't, I just use my other nails. And I just do it very gently. I don't do it too much either because I feel that it ruins your cuticles and ruins your nails. So once your nails have been nice and soft, you can literally just push them back. I actually don't have much in the way of cuticles on a couple of my nails. So it's not too bad for me. And that's it really so what we're gonna do now is I am going to use the double duty Sally Hansen base and top coat so give it a shake that was a pathetic shake but you you know what I mean and now I'm just going to I, I'm not too neat when it comes to doing the base coat because it's clear and it doesn't really matter so I'm just gonna go in Oh, it feels so weird wearing nail polish after all these months. 
These nails were so perfect, untouched, but I did miss wearing nail polish, I have to admit. Sometimes my hands just felt incomplete. There you go, as you can see I'm not too neat about it because it's clear anyway and it's only at the bottom. But it helps to protect your nails to an extent. I don't feel that it per, like protects them completely because I still find that my nails get stained. But maybe if I didn't use it, maybe they would get stained more. So I don't know. Right, so that is with the top coats, uh, sorry, the base coat. So I find that this actually dries very quickly. So just give it a couple of minutes and then we will move on to the actual nail polish. Okay, so the nails are all dry. They, like I said, the Sally Hansen dries really quick. So give this or whichever nail polish you want to use a quick shake. And I like these because they're quite wide, but they're not too wide. And I wipe off a lot of the product anyway, because the thicker the layer, the longer it takes to dry. So I am just going to start painting them. Don't worry if you make any mistakes, you can always clean it off with some nail polish remover and a cotton bud. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one who uses their right hand and does their left hand and it comes out wicked and then left on right not so wicked. Okay so a couple of little mistakes here or there but nothing that I can't remove with a bit of makeup remover and a cotton bud but that will be later on. So I am going to leave these like this for now and I don't generally tend to wait until they're completely dry before I start going in with the second layer. I mean I just don't have the patience to be honest. And I don't have one of those nail fan things, which I really want to get. I don't want to get the UV lamps, by the way, because I don't trust that stuff on my hands. But um, I really want to get one of those fans. So if any of you guys can recommend any decent like nail fans, let me know. But for now, I'm just going to leave this for a little while and then I'll come back and do a second coat. Okay, now that the nails are, I'd say, 90% dry, I always do that test like that to see if they're tacky or not. I'm now going to go in with a second layer. mistake there but that's fine okay so the nails are done so I just need to leave this to dry now before I do the final top coat okay so my nails are all lovely and dry now so before I put on the top coat to be honest I don't always use the top coat it's up to you whether or not you want to but for the purposes of the video I will but first I am going to dip a cotton bud into some nail polish remover just to tidy up some of the edges of the mistakes that I made mostly on my right hand. I don't really see any mistakes on the left hand. <laughs> So now I'm going to use the Sechet Vite Dry Fast Top Coat and that will finish off the nails. <laughs>
that's it so now your nails should look gorgeous and glossy like mine do so now all you have to do is wait for this to dry i'm back so here are the nails look at them lovely don't they just look stunningly gorgeously beautiful oh nail polish how i have missed you i think it's a good choice of color that i've got as well so yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long. I will like fast forward bits of it after doing this. It's like nearly 11 p.m. in London. I'm tired now. I actually need to wash my face and go to bed. So yeah, so um, I was happy to do this video for you guys. And yeah, so I will see you all in the next video. Oh, and I am wearing Huda Beauty's Showgirl Metallic Liquid Lipstick because you guys I know will ask. See you later. Bye.